Production funding for Arts Upload has been provided in part by Muriel McBrien Kaufman Foundation, Hall Family Foundation, Francis Family Foundation, The Hartwig Family, Courtney S. Turner Charitable Trust, and viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Randy Mason. And I'm Vanessa Severo. Stages are her stock in trade, and this week on Arts Upload, we're on the Uptown Theaters. We'll show you a painter and a poet. And the folks who bring lots of folk music to town. Not to mention acrobats and beer, mm -hmm. all ahead on the Upload. If you're trying to find painter Laura Nugent around town during most of the year, well, good luck. Chances are she's out on the art show circuit. She does like 18 to 20 exhibitions a year. But during the winter months, Laura holds up in her studio in Merriam to regroup and make new work. Thanks to producer and videographer Julie Denishay, we can peek in on Laura's creative process. Embracing the accident is part of painting. Part of making a painting that you love in the end, too, is acknowledging that you don't know how all of it happened. Like you came down to the studio the next day and thought, wow, I didn't do all that, you know? Geometry or geometric painting, everybody thinks that they can do that. And so inherently it looks easy. But the, again, the trick is, is how do how does the artist put their own individual spin on abstraction and how do we lift the, that up out of the mundane? What I'm really doing is going back in and only bringing out the things that I want to be. The strongest accents, you know, either the brightest, the brightest lights or the darkest arcs. So until that point happens, I, I just kind of play this game where I go back and forth. You change one thing and you gotta change so many other things in paintings like these. That's why half the abstract expressionists went crazy. <laughs> There's nothing anchoring them. <laughs> I can definitely see why there were artists who, who were tortured. <laughs> they were tortured by their work because they, you know, they, they spent so much time looking at it and thinking about it and probably doubting, you know, what was the substance behind this? Um, and ultimately, it really needs to be, the substance is that this is your expression. This is what your interests are. You are the first I am the first viewer of my work. And so those decisions, they should be uncomfortable and they should be things that I think about a lot before I decide that they're finished. That's what every artist wants to be, is an emerging artist, you know, regardless of their age. You want to be repositioning or transforming continuously. And so, um, that's also the challenge, is to not get caught in a situation in our own comfort zone and become pr a producer of some kind of commodity. But you know, we need to be continually emerging and, and Nugent's doing that. I still feel like every painting is potentially a game changer. You know, every, every painting that I make is potentially a new direction. And I think it's important for me to kind of contain that and, and see through some of those ideas without shifting too quickly. I think it's, it's part of being older is not giving into um, impulsivity as much as um, being willing to explore something over the course of years. Sometimes it's hard when you have to let go of very small moments that you think are what's so great about a painting and oh, trying to hold on to those moments. You can't 
move forward with it. And so the best thing you can do is obscure those things and just forget that they were there. You know, it's like a little triumph that you thought, well, that was a very nice little section of painting there, but unfortunately it has to take one for the team and go away. Like in most abstraction, the main challenge is to do the most with the least amount of work to find some economical way to do this. And, and um, Laura's work, are be they're becoming more lush at the same time they're becoming more spare. In a lot of ways that this work is about the passage of time for me. I think in particular where I am in my life that I am feeling a much greater sense of urgency that I was told I would feel at this point when I was much younger. And I get it now. I get the idea of committing to something as simple as a line and getting it to where I want it to be and, and that being what's important to me about that painting. And I really want people to realize that the imperfection that they may or may not detect right away is, is mine. An exhibition of new and recent works by Laura Nugent is on display at Michael Smith's in the Crossroads through March 31st. Hey, the Kansas City streetcar runs right by that restaurant. Mm -hmm. And chances are it's getting a real workout this week thanks to a whole lot of folk musicians who are in town. The Folk Alliance International Conference is underway at the Weston Crown Center. But as you'll see, the people who plan, build, and showcase these thousands of talented players work here year-round. It's part of our collaboration with KC Studio Magazine to cover the arts more fully. Take a look. Everyone is at the conference. It is ultimately, as much as it is a, an amazing family reunion and an industry event, it's ultimately about um, artists finding work for the next year and beyond. And presenters are there to select the artists that they hope to book, and artists are there to connect with the people who will network them and, and connect them with their future audience. We have nine stages going on at one time. We currently stagger those stages, so four to five performances are going on at any given time. We currently have 199 official showcase artists. Private showcase is a totally separate entity that we don't program, but we currently have just under 3,000 private showcase performances going on late night. It's crazy, but it's fun crazy. If this is what fun crazy looks like once things are underway, here's how the home team gets ready for it two weeks out. Folk Lines International, this is Leah. So the best place would probably be the Century Foyer. Do you have his number? Would I be able to call? I think phone is sometimes easier than email. Just make it strictly private events or... Lots of last minute questions have come here looking for answers. Even as shipments and supplies for the conference keep piling up, and inventory for the annual silent auction is coming down. Since the operation moved here from Memphis in 2013, some major changes have occurred. Executive Director Lewis Myers first shifted his role to special projects, then passed away suddenly in 2016. The folk store he'd brought with him closed down last summer to make room for more full-time employees. They're now up to seven. Lewis, when he did it, it was really like all in his head. And I would come to the office and, and then I showed up to the conference. I'm like, when did he do this? <laughs> like, what happened to create this? Okay. But it's been fun being on the other side and actually diving deep and doing the planning um, that Lewis had done for so many years before that. With so many performers to wrangle, considerable time goes into getting the lineup just right. 
But this year's conference, more than ever, incorporates elements of what they like to call around here the ethos, like making sure this five-day indoor event is as green as possible. We started with partnering up with Bridging the Gap, who came over here and trained us on how to recycle, how to compost, how to set up stations, and they are working directly with the Weston Hotel. Last year, we implemented a hotel key card that's made out of wood, not plastic. This year, instead of having handbills all over the hotel, we're asking people to do digital ads. We're trying to implement as many of those things as possible throughout the conference. It's not exclusively about music. The folk music community comes with, uh, with more nuance than, than just a, a style of music. And, and that includes being mindful of our, our footprint. That includes being socially active. This year's theme was actually chosen 18 months ago, but its timeliness has helped bring out some heavy hitters, from Billy Bragg and Ani DeFranco to Bruce Coburn and Rami, often called the Egyptian Bob Dylan. As troubadours always did, traveling from place to place, telling the news of the day, so too do the, the modern folk singers with their perspectives and stories, and it's one of the important reasons to have this international cross-pollination is to, to be sharing ideas and perspectives. Which is good. It's exciting to see really talented musicians put down their instruments and listen to someone else and be inspired by what they're doing and, and see opportunities to, to play with new styles of music or to incorporate new things into their work. Sometimes cross-pollination starts at home. The Folk Alliance Artist in Residence program is teaming poet and policeman Chano Villalobos with Making Movies. On Sunday, the band will take part in the first ever Kansas City Folk Festival, an event the organizers hope will someday stand on its own, regardless of where the conference may be taking place. Now with the opening chords just about 48 hours away, a team of volunteers is helping the staff load up and move on to the venue. Veterans of this process like Jennifer Rowe know they can count on a couple of things. One, there will be some surprises, and two, they'll have precious little time to actually hear any music. It's rare that I get to experience and enjoy more than five or 10 minutes of something. Five or 10 minutes is a luxury. There was a moment last year where I walked by a room and saw the crowd and I'm like, we did that. Like we brought these bands here and put this on and people are loving it and enjoying it. And that's, it's very rewarding to see that. It's ironic to have come from the music side and a, a one-time showcasing artist at Folk Alliance to now be popping my head in at the end of a very long conference to see a few shows in the wee hours on the Saturday night. I think of it as kind of like a high school dance where you just move from one corner to another. So once an artist in one corner um, and, and now an administrator in, in another, but we're all there to do the same thing and that's you know, me there at the high school dance. And in this case, it's just a, a really big high school dance. We love poets here. From the outset, Arts Upload has been a place where talented local writers can read and well perform some of their poems. This week, it's Chico Sierra, working as always with producer videographer Justin Bond. His poem is called To the Fortune Teller. My memory soaked in floor cleaner. I find them in my mother's kitchen, where I found half my smile. Half my smile. The remainder still tucked beneath my discontent. Still my discontent. Tucked. My discontent. I asked the gypsy woman, why is there satisfaction in new things? I've been looking for that old stuff, that pile of old, musty, dusty stuff, that stuff that smells like honey. That stuff that smells like pine salt. My mother mopped the floor. My mother mopped the floor. It smells like gunpowder, like a lit match, sulfur on charcoal, shotgun shells and fireworks. Shotgun shotgun 
The gypsy woman said, you will always be a mystery to yourself. You'll be the only person to break your heart. She was blind and sweet and smelled like Palo Santo and cigarettes. She held me for a while. She held me for a while. She held me. Her hair was like straw. What kept a dry woman from catching fire? She touched my thoughts and burst into flames. Disappeared like a whisper in someone else's conversation. She took my secrets, the ones I'd kept for myself. My mother is still mopping the kitchen floor. Kitchen floor. Ever heard the term atmospheric theater? No. Well, it was theaters that had sky and clouds and stars up on the ceiling, and the Uptown was the only one in Missouri. This place was built in the Italian Renaissance style, and it's almost 100 now. The Uptown opened its doors in 1928. After they stopped showing movies back in the 60s, it became pretty much a full-time concert venue. I know I saw everyone from Tom Waits to The Pretenders, even Meatloaf here back in the day. It got a major redo back in the 90s, and today the concerts and events continue. In fact, thanks to the magic of television, we're not really here right now, and Sting is. Okay, we can't match that kind of star power, but what we've got next for you from Montreal is pretty darn fun. It's the acrobatic and athletic guys from Machine de Cirque who are giving Goofy a good name. The show is like about like friendship and relations. Here in Machine de Cirque, we find five men cast together in a post-apocalyptic world. They're alone and rather athletic. And even in desolation, boys will be boys. We are five jokester so we always joke around and make stupid things and acrobatic and mess around <laughs> people like get um, involved with us because they feel at the end they know us so we're actually seeing you on stage yeah yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> The five performers of the Montreal-based Machine de Cirque are also its founders. Friends for a decade now, they crafted a show they could make their own to test themselves and their limits, says performer Maxim Lauren. A part of the definition of a circus is like uh, taking risk. You don't want to see a miss, but you know it can happen, and this is like the, the, the part of the show that is so true. Does the fear ever take over? Does it ever become crippling? Well, um, never in shows, but before you all, yeah, always have your head like sometimes working like, oh, well, what the, if this happens or like, oh, if I'm like, I'm tired today, or, I don't feel good. And there's always this, um, this thinking that can be like dangerous sometimes. But once you're in show, you can't really think. And that's what's great also about being on stage. Fear, it seems, is fleeting. This summer, Lauren and a Machine de Cirque colleague attempted to beat the Guinness World Record of 50 consecutive flips on the teeterboard. The most flip without doing any straight jumps in between for as long as possible. <laughs> and how many did you do? We did 101. And how much did you hurt afterward? Well, we were definitely uh, dizzy and uh, out of breath because it lasted almost 3 minutes 30 with like non-stop flipping. So. It was, it was pretty intense, but it was very fun. The captain of fun, arguably, is the show's lone musician, Frederick Lebrasseur. I'm alone to make the music, trying to make the right thing in the right place, and it's more play with that. Lebrasseur is a virtual sponge, soaking up his ever-changing soundscape. It's time I walk in the street, I look the thing, and I ask in my head, what is the sound of that? Something is very beautiful, it, oh. And sometimes it looks like nothing, it, don't, wah, wah, wah. you say, wow. Does that come naturally to you? Yeah, I don't know, M maybe it's just with the time. If you have a car, I don't take the car. I prefer to take my voice and make, 
or if you have a dolphin, I, it's possible to go to record the dolphin, but I prefer to do. It's a choice. Dep depend. Uh, How do you do that? <laughs> I, my father is a dolphin. <laughs> your father is not a dolphin. I don't know your father, but I know he's not a dolphin. Uh, my mother. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's my mother. Sorry. <laughs> what does a city bus sound like? But I don't know. I just came now. But um, maybe I can check what is the sound of this place if you want. You want okay. that? Okay. Just to. The show is full of unexpected twists and daring do's. The most precarious involving bath towels. Whatever you do, you, you can't hide the fact that this situation is very uh, touchy, you know? So uh, the audience feels it as well. And so it's, it's very fun to play around. And, and actually, the, the risk is that if we drop, you, you see everybody sees you naked. So. And we don't like this to happen. So. <laughs> has it ever happened? Yes, it has happened sometimes. <laughs> You're not shy. I oh, actually, say. we are very shy. <laughs> and this is what's really funny about it. Because if we wouldn't be shy, actually, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as fun, I think. But <laughs> it's every time we do this part is very, like, we're laughing, but laughing very nervously, like, <laughs> Like the rest of the show, it's a testament to the group's naked ambition. We have time for one more story on this edition of Arts Upload from one of our PBS peers in South Florida. Call me sentimental, but beer and art, a pairing for the ages. Here's how they're dressing up the Florida Keys Brewing Company in Isla Mirada. Florida Keys Brewing Company, we're in the uh, heart of the Broadway Arts District. The space that we moved into had been used mostly for maintenance, so we had to do a lot of work to really kind of make it into, what you know, first something we can make beer in, something, uh, you know, fairly uh, sanitary, and then we wanted to make it into almost an art gallery as well. Being in the Arts District, my wife, her, her love of art and her skill with art, you know, we really wanted to make it somewhere kind of very unique. A lot of lo other local artists have come in and add their flair, and there's still more artists coming in to, uh, to add more. Almost uh, every month, different people come in. We got uh, Ruth Gilmore Lang, she did an abstract sun for us. Uh, Pasta Pantaleo did a huge uh, mermaid mural of Flaky, who's our, she's kind of our mascot. BJ Royster, uh, she did a spot. Uh, she did a nice octopus and a turtle. And then Teresa Kelly did our bar top, which is three octopus on the top, which is phenomenal. This is Monique Richter. Uh, she approached us about a month ago. She does large murals, and luckily we had a big open uh, space on the wall that we were looking to get to have something done. So it worked out really well that she was able to do it and then also do it tonight on the Night of the Art Walk. I do big murals, mainly ocean scenes and marine water life. I'm actually a boat captain, so I travel everywhere and I'm inspired by my travels. So everything's from my mind, nothing's really uh, from photographs or anything like that. Uh, she started uh, this afternoon, or late late morning. Um, I'm really not too sure how long it's going to take her. She's got a lot done in a, in a short amount of time already. Physically, it's about balance and creativity, <laughs> not falling off. And I can't use a paintbrush, which I'm normally used to, because it's too far. So I'm challenging myself with a roller which is interesting, it's coming out, got two different sizes. What it's going to be, it's an alligator lighthouse, which is an island Mirada, a stormy sunrise with a below water line, so you can actually see the coral reef, and there's gonna be waves crashing against the lighthouse.
My wife's name is Cheryl McBeck. She's growing up here uh, and knowing everybody. You know, she really wanted to do something that was really going to be part of the community and really kind of give something back and something that's a little bit different. You know, there's a lot of the same sort of, you know, businesses down here. So we wanted something different. And we both love craft beer. So we want to bring good craft beer uh, to Alamrod and, you know, and all of the keys as well. My art is my beer, so we want people to come in and enjoy the beer, but then we also want people to see you know, a really comfortable atmosphere with other local artists and just somewhere really kind of relaxing and you know, just want to hang out, drink some beers, and just have a good time. Not that there aren't lots of great craft brewers setting up shop around here as well and live music venues serving their products. We want to thank the Uptown Theater for letting us share some stories with you this week. And I want to thank you, Vanessa, for letting Maris enjoy a little extra baby time. Till later this spring, when we return with new episodes, I'm Randy Mason. And I'm Vanessa Severo. Thanks for joining us on Arts Upload. I let you die in Production funding for Arts Upload has been provided in part by Muriel McBrien Kaufman Foundation, Hall Family Foundation, Francis Family Foundation, The Hartwig Family, Courtney S. Turner Charitable Trust, and viewers like you. Thank you.